Welcome back to the Ford Tech Garage. I'm Chris, and today I'm going to be thanking you for helping me hit a thousand subscribers. It really means a lot that you guys have been hitting that subscribe button. It shows your appreciation for all the work that goes into these videos. It really slows down the process of trying to wrench when you're moving cameras and lights, then going back through the video and narrating to make sure that you have the information that I'm trying to convey. So thanks again for clicking the subscribe button and hitting that like button, and hopefully we'll be getting to our next thousand shortly. So today we're continuing on with the Jeep. I've got the wire harness all run underneath the Jeep, and now we're ready to go ahead and connect up the tail lights. However, the tail lights haven't been sandblasted, painted, any of that. So today in this video, we're gonna go through the whole process. And additionally, some of the bulbs were burned out. And this uses a very specific um, bulb where it's part of the lens and everything. And so I'm gonna show you how I modified those to uh, convert it over to more of a modern style where we'll just be servicing the bulb. It didn't make sense to try to source those other bulbs, especially in a 12 volt conversion that I'm running. So let's go ahead and get into sandblasting those tail lights and we'll start converting. Okay, for the life of me, I cannot get these connectors off. There was a whole bunch of like tar and stuff on here. So I'm not really sure what's going on with that, but we're just gonna go ahead and cut those connectors off. Pop it off. It just, the outside shield came off and now I'm just left with this inner plastic piece here. Yep, and that pried right out. So, Threaded down over the weld, and now we should be able just to run this thread chaser right out of here. So now that the housings are painted, we need to address the bulbs. And these old style bulbs, it's like the whole lens and everything incorporates the bulb in it. And they're hard to find, and I could not find 12 volt ones readily available. So my plan is to cut the bulb portion out of that housing. And so the first thing I did was find the bulbs I want to use, and then size them up to a, a socket or some other circle. and trace that on there. And then using a Dremel I just cut that circle around. And now here you can kind of see what's inside there. It's just a regular bulb but for some reason they mounted it to that whole entire housing. So now we have a rough cut and the bulb doesn't quite fit. So I went back with the Dremel and just kind of ground it until it fit. And that gives me a nice clean finish as well. And getting ready to fit those bulbs in the housing, the first thing I needed to do was grind the paint out of the socket so that we'll have a good ground connection. And that really becomes a theme on these tail lights. Now that bulb is going to twist right in there. And the sockets are going to provide the spring tension for the bulbs to stay in there. And those just twist in the back. The stoplight is going to be on this side. So now the harness can just push in and lock. And then we need one more of our bowls. And now you can just 
push a bulb into that spring and give it a twist and it locks right into that housing. And then we can take our, our modified housings and just slide them right over that bulb. And that should seal right up into our so now I'm test fitting the lens cover on there and you got to kind of line them up because without the bulb socket they're not going to line up. And what I found is they're not, there's really no tension in there and they're not quite being held in place properly. And it turns out because if I cut that socket end off, it doesn't have anything to support it. So if we look at this, we can see that one side has the higher up pin, the other side has the lower up pin for clocking the dim and break bulb, but the actual housing, the two pins are the same depth. So I'm just going to grind off that high pin and that'll allow it to be installed and then it'll just be a matter of testing for which one is break and which one is just running light. Put this socket in from the back because I don't want to twist I don't want to twist these connections. So these connections will go in, hit the bulb, and then we'll twist. And now we want to test and we'll see which one is, if the wires are right. Maybe our marker bulb. Blue, red. Okay, so blue right now is the dimmer one, red is the brake bulb. So we need to look at the wiring diagram and see which should be which. Marker light. Oh, it's pink. Yeah, it looks... No, it's red. It looks pink from the camera. Wait, do the other one again? I don't know if we do both. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. In the video, it looks pink, see? Yeah. Mm. Okay, perfect. We're ready to install them in the Jeep. So to combat that loose bulb feeling, I had to design this part in... Uh, 3d CAD and then print it out and that's going to act as a spacer that'll support those bulb housings Because they don't have the socket anymore on them So we have our 3d printed piece here So this spacer should fit around those bolts and around the bulbs and support the lens housings Do that. I got my brake light in We got our marker light bulb Can go back in is one smaller than the other? Yes. Ooh. And now we can fit the brake light and a tail light. And now these are sitting on that 3D print and that's supporting them for just the right depth. So we put our housing on. It's just going to be pressing them up against that 3D printed block. Those mounted in there. These are not supported anymore, so they kind of move around a little bit, but that looks pretty good. Let's get a screw. And that is how I converted these lights to 12 volt with replaceable bulbs. So I'm looking at getting the tail lights mounted, and I guess you could just put them in here, but I do know that you're supposed to put this grommet around, would be the correct way to install these. So I went ahead and got them. They're Joe's Murder Pole from Ron Fitzpatrick, and they are going to Go in here like this, and then our tail light will slide in there. And they don't just kind of stick in there on their own. Um, so we're going to try to put a little bit of this Permatex Super Weather Strip Adhesive. I found this stuff is actually a really great product. This stuff can be very messy and it can get really messy. 
Okay. And now we'd be ready to slide our taillight in. And we're going to prepare to put these in the Jeep. So I want to grind off the paint and expose a bare ground because this does ground through the body. Then I'm just going to feed that taillight socket harness in there. And I'm using a star washer so that I can dig into that metal and make sure I get a good ground. And we'll just tighten it up with some new hardware. And that's going to do it for mounting the taillights. Now going back to the wiring harness kit, we're going to find these straight connectors and there's a Y connector that also connects the right hand side harness and just go ahead and plug in our taillight harnesses where that body harness terminated at the rear of the frame there. Where the heck is this thing supposed to go? Just boop them in there. Boop! Okay, so that's it. It's all in. We're all wired up. And the wires are all secure, and that completes the tail portion of the wiring harness and the last of our wiring. So now we can go test the tail lights, see how they're all working. Now I'll have my assistant press down on the brake pedal, and there it is. That's the full brightness brake pedal. And then I'll flip the headlight switch, and there's our marker light. And then we'll try our blackout lights, and yep, they work great too. Well, there you go, the tail lights are working. I think they look awesome. This project came out so cool, and I was I really actually enjoyed adding that element of 3D printing, that little block in there to kind of support everything. It just made this a very fun project to do. Now, as you could probably tell from the from my intro. The Jeep is running now, and I do have to still get that video going. So I've got a lot of content to go through and edit for you guys. And I'm going to try to get caught up as much as possible on that. Because you guys are liking and subscribing to the channel, I need to make sure I'm putting out content you guys will enjoy as uh, appreciation for your subscribe. So as always, thanks for watching, and I hope I'll see you next time, because you never know what we're going to get into in the Ford Tech Garage.